Hi and welcome to the channel. So today I'm going to show you how to make the most amazing pork ribs ever. The most tender, juicy, most flavoursome ribs you've ever, ever had. You're watching Big Al's Barbecue. Let's get to it. Okay, so these are St. Louis cut ribs and I'll be quite honest here. Ribs are arguably one of the most easiest things to do. However, they can also be the most complicated. There's, There's so many different opinions out there about what you should add to the cook, how you should prep these, you know, uh, from like time temp. There's so many different variations out there. Ultimately, if you've got a favorite, that's what you've got to go with. But what I'm going to show you today is what I found works for me. So I'm not going to bother the 3 t one method. I know that's very popular. So all I'm going to do is prepare these and I'll show you that. And then I'm going to put them on the smoker and I'm just going to watch them. I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to keep an eye on them. And when I feel that this bark is perfectly formed, then I will wrap, cook for probably an hour until tender, and then I will open and just sort for like the last 15 minutes. I found that's kind of like got the best results for me. So these are St. Louis cut ribs. So these are actually quite um, like meaty ribs. And you can see on here, the marbling that you got through both of these. It's fantastic. It looks really, really nice. These are gonna be so juicy and so tender, they're gonna be stunning. Right, so looking at these, there's a few things that we probably need to trim off. As you can see here, there is a scraggly bit of bone on here, and that's not gonna do anything. All that's gonna actually do is rip through your temple when you wrap it. And then you've got this bit of meat on top, which isn't gonna make very nice eating and you've got this layer of fat under it as well. So let's get rid of those two things. So first of all, take a sharp knife and obviously try not to take off any of the meat if you can avoid it. And then when we get to this bone, which is about there, I'm just gonna cut through. There we go. Nice. Seem to get a bit more of this fat off. Okay, everything else feels nice. So I'm just fitting along the edge here and just making sure that I'm happy that there's no bones that are gonna stick out later on that are gonna cause a problem. I mean, obviously as these cook, you're gonna get drawback on the bones anyway. That's what you're aiming for. Because what you want on these is that meat to close in, to like plump up, and then, and that's what that drawback on the bone is indicating is happening. And that means that when you go to take that bite, you've got more meat in a smaller space. And therefore, when you bite, it's more like, you know, a, big, a better bite, basically a better mouthful. The other thing we're gonna do on these is take off this membrane. So a lot of people um, will just score through this. Some people leave it on completely. I personally don't, I, I hate, there's nothing for me, there's nothing worse than you go to a restaurant, you, you order a rack of ribs and you bite for it and you have to deal with that disgusting membrane. Also, that membrane is stopping the rub getting through it into the meat and getting all that flavor and everything into the meat. So we kind of want to avoid that as much as possible. So, if you get a paper towel, now, because I'm doing this for a video, it won't go first time, but <laughs> we'll give it a go anyway. So just get on that membrane. Get it all nice and set up. And then hopefully, ah, it's splitting on me. That's not bad actually, I'm quite happy with that. From some of the ones I've pulled, literally I've been here for about days <laughs> because these little bits off. If you've got any straggly bits, if you get your finger in between the bits of bone and you push in there, you should be able to slip a finger on and then like I say just get another bit of kitchen wire and just pull as much of that skin off as possible. Okay, that looks good. Okay, the next thing to do is to season these. So I personally, I use Worcestershire sauce or Worcester sauce. Um, or a lot of people just go Liam Perry's. Um, they know what it is. Um, basically, what this is gonna do is just act as a binder 
a lot of people also use um, kind of like yellow mustard, like French's yellow mustard. Um, I've tried a variety of things, including apple cider vinegar. I've used um, apple juice. I've used, like, say, French mustard. And of all of them, I found that this, like, you can tell the flavour coming through, and it's a really nice subtle flavour. So I tend to use this. So let's apply this onto this. Give it a good application. I mean, if your your ribs are already pretty wet, arguably you don't need to do this bit. Um, but if um, like these, they're not as wet as I would like them, then um, we just apply a bit of this. Okay. So I've got two rubs today. So I've got um, the Kid Hogs barbecue rub, and I'm going to use that on this one. And the other one, I'm going to use Meat Church's Holy Voodoo. Both are quite different in flavour profile. Um, this one is actually really good. Well, actually, they're both fantastic, so I'm using these today. Um, okay, so on this one, I'm going to use Mr. Reed's. And let's try and get a nice, easy application, almost like a typewriter. So we'll do it from some height and get a really nice application. So you can see that red colour that's coming out on this rubble, that paprika and what have you that's in there. That will just come out beautifully. That, the colour this will give the ribs is fantastic. I'm so excited about the ribs, I can't believe it. I'm really looking forward to this. Okay, let's do the other side. Now before anyone asks, with everything I touch, um, I wash it and clean it and disinfect it afterwards. Um, so all these bowls, everything like that, the knife, everything obviously I'll wash and clean out. So don't worry about me touching stuff. Um, you can use gloves, but don't worry. So again, do it from a decent height, really nice application. You can just see that, you can just, they just look good. You just know when you do stuff like that, they're just gonna come out amazing. Last thing I'm gonna do is just try and catch all the sides. So you can use your hand, pat it along, put that rub along there. Also do the ends, don't forget them. Perfect. Okay, so we are going to leave these to sit out for at least 15 minutes. So I'm going to do this next set of ribs next, but you want to leave these for a good 15 minutes. You really want that rub to adhere to the meat. Some people have done these the night before. Personally, I think that's a bad idea. I think because a lot of these rubs, obviously you can make your own, <coughs> but a lot of these rubs will have quite a lot of salt in it. And basically what will happen is overnight, you just draw out a lot of moisture. And with these ribs, they're not a, a fantastically long cook. Like we're talking five hours, I guess. And what I find is that if you've done them the night before, then actually you're going to take a lot of moisture out. With things like briskets and stuff like that, yeah, okay, they're a bigger piece of meat. There's a lot more moisture in there, so you can arguably do it the night before to save a bit of time. But with ribs, I would not recommend it. Okay. Okay, so it's been 30 minutes since we applied the rub. And as you can see, the surface of both of these ribs is looking really nice and wet. And that means that the rub has adhered nicely to it. So it started drawing out the water from the actual rib itself. That salt started doing its, uh, doing its job. And now we need to put these onto the smoker. Now it's running at 250 and I'm gonna main it, maintain it at 250 for the entire cook. Um, and today I'm using cooking pellets and I'm using their uh, black cherry. Now these pellets are stunning. When you look at them, they are a really nice deep red colour and they add a beautiful flavour and beautiful colour to these ribs. In fact, I use them on any pork product. So please check out their website. These guys are really passionate about what they do and the product is fantastic. Um, they kindly sent me these bags for free, um, but please go and check them out. Right, so the last thing we're going to do, I'm going to say before I put these on, is that when you put them on, we want to plump them up. So we want to push the bones together. And the reason you're doing is that, is that when you put it on the 
smoker, that's how they're going to set. So by pushing them together, you're already helping that meat to plump up so it'll be a, a better bite when you have that, um, put that in your mouth and buy that barbecue. So let's stick these on. Okay, so I've not put any probe or anything on these ones. I'm literally just gonna check them every hour, decide whether or not I need to spritz them or not, and just keep going until they're at the point where I'm thinking, right, okay, they need rub. And part of that is experience. Just by looking at it, seeing how they're doing, you're gonna get to a feeling where actually, I need to wrap these now. Right, well, let's show back in a little okay, while. So just on the way of an update, these ribs have been going for over an hour now. See that start the set. Looking good. Long way to go though before we're out, but we're looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. It's been about two hours now and it's time to check on these ribs and see how they're doing. So you can see they've got beautiful colour, but they're starting to dry out. Okay, so the ribs have been in the smoker for just over four hours now. I just had a quick look and they are perfect, perfect time to be um, wrapped. So basically what we're gonna do, I've got four bits of four here, so two for each. So first thing I'm gonna do is get the rib out. Probably step one, very old, wasn't it? Look at those, they look Amazing, the color on those is fantastic. That looks stunning, I'm so looking forward to these. Okay, so we're gonna go for sweet option this time. So I'm gonna put a good amount of sugar just down here. I'm then gonna get some pats of butter. And these, is, this is salted butter, but you can use unsalted if you wish. Then I'm just gonna get some normal honey. Good amount of that. And then finally, I'm just gonna put a bit more rub on. And these are the um, killer hog ones. Perfect. Okay, so the ribs are meat side down. This is where you have to juggle one of the pleasures of outdoor cooking. <laughs> kind of like having to fight the wind all the way. So be careful when you wrap these not to pierce the foil. So we don't want to split the foil because as soon as you split the foil, we're in a lot of trouble. So that's another reason why we double wrap it as well. Now, the folds are all going up the top. And the reason that the folds are going up the top is that we want the meat to sit within all that sugar and the honey and the butter. So we want it to sit in there and just get that extra bit of like um, flavoring, that extra bit of tenderness and all those juices going back into the meat. So that's all you want to do. Let's do the next one. You can already see these have got really nice bit of movement on them they are ready to go so this is the perfect so all the cues you've got for wrapping you've got the pullback started you've got the bend in the actual rib itself so i'm going to do exactly the same on this one perfect 
Right, so we'll stick those back on. So we'll give those another hour, uh, come back and they should be ready to eat at that point. But then we're gonna open them up, sauce them, and then give them another 10, 15 minutes and then they'll be done. Right, see you back in an hour. Okay, so it's been another hour since we've wrapped these up. Um, I have just probed them and they are uh, ready. Basically, when you probe between the bones, you basically get no resistance. It literally just slip through. It's nice and tender, almost like putting your knife through warm butter. And that's the state they're at in the moment. So now I'm gonna take them out and I'll show you the next step. So, I love sauce on my ribs. I absolutely love Some people like dry. I personally don't, I love the sauce. I think it adds just that extra bit of element to it. So as we got this tin foil, we're gonna make a nice little boat for them to go back into. So that'll keep your grill nice and clean. To help keep all that moisture in. So there we go. You can make nice little boats for it. Keep everything in. Perfect. Okay, so if I flip these over, they are looking good. So I'm using uh, Meat Mitch today. There are loads of barbecue sauces out there, but I just found this one works fantastically well on these. So just gonna pour a little bit on there and then just spread that all over. That looks so good. They smell amazing. Oh. Bit more over here, I don't want to be too tight now, do I? Never want to be tight when it comes to barbecue. We always got to be generous. Feeding family and friends, that's what it's all about. These haven't got much pulled back as they normally would, but they were quite thick ribs, so that's fine. I don't mind that too much. They are extremely tender. If I get this firmer pen very quickly, just see there is literally no resistance at all right do the next one so very carefully put these back on the next one so i'm going to bump the temperature up to probably 275 um just Basically, there's, there's no more cooking than these doing. The ribs are cooked, they're done. But you just want that sauce to tack up so when someone takes that bite, they don't get a face full of sauce and it drips down and it gets messy. So just by tacking it up, just means when they bite it, they got that flavor, all the juiciness. Oh, I'm watering, my mouth's watering. Right, okay. We'll come back in 10, 15 minutes, check how they're doing and we'll go from there. Right, okay, so we've given them 15 minutes. These are all tacked up and you can see that they look absolutely stunning. Look at all the juices, everything on those. They look absolutely gorgeous. My mouth is just watering just looking at these. I cannot wait to cut into them. So now's the time. So you can put these upside down and you can perhaps see the bones a little bit easier, but you're looking to cut through those plump bits. Look at that, look at that, that is gorgeous. Look how juicy that is. That is stunning. Time for the try, all that work. Let's give it a go. Wizard, oh, that is amazing. Those are perfectly cooked. You can see that bite through. They are so juicy, moist and tender and the flavor Wow, that is incredible. Well look, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe, hit the notification button and like. If there's any comments you want to leave, any questions you got, please leave your comments down below. But you've been watching Big Al's Barbecue and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.